And now, stay tuned for the program that is rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil program, The Whistler. S-I-G-N-A-L Signal Signal Gasoline Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. For extra driving pleasure, the signal to look for is the yellow and black circle sign that identifies signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And for Sunday evening listening pleasure, the signal to listen for is this whistle that identifies the signal oil program, the Whistler. I am the Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now the Whistler's strange story, Letters from Aaron Burr. Beating down on the prison yard, the afternoon sun seemed to fade the grayness somehow, dwarf the height of the high walls. The prisoners milling slowly about or standing in little groups were talking quietly, smoking during their brief recess from the chores of the jute mill, the machine and print shop. Yes, it was a let-up in the middle of the afternoon, an easing of pressure on both the men in confinement and the guards who watched them. And in a far corner of the yard, there was one man who actually felt happy, pleased with himself as he talked with an older companion. You know, Pop, it's still kind of hard to believe. I guess I won't believe it till I actually walk out of those gates. I envy you, son. Wish I hadn't pulled that last forgery. <laughs> figured it'd put me on my feet. But you figured wrong? Uh -huh. Me, an artist who can duplicate anything. Ernie... I don't want to preach. Skip it, Pop. Skip it. They I'll try manage. to help you. The prison officials, people outside, too. But it's still the same. Five bucks, a blue serge suit, and a pat on the back. It might as well be a show. <laughs> sure. I like you, Ernie. You're all right. I want to make sure you stay out of here. So? So I'm asking you to do something. There's a place I want you to go. Somebody I want you to see. A, a Mrs. Alden. Mrs. Alden? She's a fine, wonderful old woman. Tries to help people. Lives just for that. You go see her tomorrow afternoon. Tell her I'm well. Talk to her. I'll talk to her, Pop. About you. And about yourself. If you need anything, well, she's prominent in the Community Aid Society. I'll see Mrs. Uh, Alden for you. But I'm not looking for any handouts. Well, there she blows. Back to work. I'll see you later, Pop. I'll give you that address, honey. Mrs. Alden. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> You forget Pop Wiley almost immediately, don't you, Ernie? Yes, because you've other things on your mind, other plans. And the hours drag until the following morning when you're ready to leave. Ready to become Ernie Madden again, rather than number 2214. And then finally, as the big gates open for you and you walk through, there's a car waiting for you. And your old friend Joe Bennett reaches out to shake your hand and pull you inside. Hello, Ernie. <laughs> good to see you again. <laughs> really good. Thanks, Bennett. Thanks. Well, I see you got my letter asking you to meet me. You sure did. Come on, come on, get in. <laughs> ah. Oh, uh, say, hmm? one thing. Take a look across the street there. What, the Dane? Yeah, you know her? Never saw her before in my life. Funny. Why? Uh, she's been hanging around ever since I pulled up. Kept watching the gate. Just sitting there in the car... Watching. Wait. Oh, well. Uh, what do you want to do, Ernie? Uh, first, I mean, where do you want to go? First, take me to the best men's store in town. Yeah, and then? And then you can let me have a couple of hundred bucks. I want to get started right. Jack. Yeah, you 
can't beat this place, honey, unless you want to go in for some tailored stuff. No, 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 this will do fine. I just want to get out of this blue surge, that's all. Yeah. Well, I'll see you later, Bennett. Thanks for the lift and the loan. Uh, look, uh, I'll go in with you and wait for you. Some of the boys want to see you. No, 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 thanks. You go ahead. Tell the boys I'll look them up. Well, okay. Uh, hey. Huh? Hey, wait a minute. Your friend. Hmm? The dame. She's still with us. See? Rosa Street. <laughs> well, so she is. Well, she won't know me when I come out of here, Bennett. Clothes make a new man. Yeah, I don't like it. You gotta find out what she's up to. <laughs> Maybe I will, but not until I can make a better impression. So long, kid. So long. You enter the clothing store and buy the suit you've been dreaming about. Then you have to kill some time, don't you, Ernie, while the tailor in the clothing store makes some hurried alterations on your new suit. You walk across the street to a small bar. You're about to slide onto a stool when you see something in the mirror. The girl again, taking a booth only a few feet away. You turn and walk over to her. Something on your mind, honey? I beg your pardon. And I beg yours. Only I shouldn't. You've been following me, sweetheart, all morning, ever since I checked out of my... Uh, <clears throat> Last hotel. Uh, if you'll sit down, I'll, I'll try to explain. I'm listening. But you didn't listen to Pop Wiley and go to see Mrs. Alden, did you? Oh, you know Pop. Mrs. Alden does. I work for her. Oh, sort of a watchdog to see that charity cases don't go astray? Not a watchdog. A social secretary. And not charity. No, no, just a helping hand. Oh, word. And what do you get out of it? Not a living. I donate my time. Not all of it, of course, but I'm there every evening. I I also have a curio shop. You know, antiques, old manuscripts, objects of art. I think a couple of martinis would be objects of art right now. May I? Please, I know how little... How little you poor boys are given to start out again in the cold, cold world. <laughs> now, you're wrong, honey, about me. I don't need a helping hand, a kind word or a loose buck. Oh, I'm sorry. And I... don't let the blue surge fool you. I'm changing that, too. Oh? Oh, yeah, yeah, you won't know me. I just bought me a complete new outfit. Taylor had to make a few alterations, you know, cuffs, sleeves, padding on the shoulders. Really? I'd have thought in your case I'd have to take a little padding out. <laughs> well, thanks. You're cute, too. Oh, waiter. Uh, never mind ordering from me. I think you can manage drinking alone. You seem so self-sufficient. Okay, it's your loss, honey. I'm sure of it. Goodbye. <laughs> you ought to stick around and see me with the shoulder padding. <laughs> You return to the clothing store and change to your new suit. As you leave, you look around, half expecting to see the girl again. You feel better now, don't you, Ernie, with a new suit on. And it gives you a certain satisfaction to pay cash for it. Tell the tailor to throw your old one away or give it to charity. Half a block away, you stop. Turn as you see someone crossing the street. It's the girl again, isn't it? And she doesn't think you've seen her. You step back against the building and watch as she enters the store you just left. She comes out a few minutes later carrying something in a suit box. She crosses the street again, enters an alley. And that's when your curiosity takes over completely. You hurry after her. As she reaches her parked car, you see her take the blue serge suit, which you discarded from the box. A moment later, she tears at the lining with a nail file and takes something out. Oh. Hello, honey. What do you want? What do you got? Uh, from the suit, I mean. My suit. You you threw it away. The clerk said you didn't want it. But you did, huh? Why, for charity? A less fortunate case, maybe? Yes, yes, that's it. No, no, that isn't it. Let me see No, that. give me that. It's nothing you... It's, well, some sort of a letter. Signed by... Huh? Aaron Burr. It's, it's just a joke. On who? Not Aaron Burr. No. Hey, wait a minute, honey. An old letter smuggled out of the pen in my suit. Why? Please give it to me. I... I get it. Pop. Pop Wiley, the forgery artist. Ha <laughs> ha, he's still at it. No, that isn't true. Uh, it's the letter that isn't true, honey. Just a clever forgery, huh? And say... Say, it's pretty clever how you managed to smuggle the stuff out of there. On the backs of the poor unfortunates. All right. So what are you going to do about it? Go to the police? Me? Honey, I never want to see another cop. Hey, this, uh, this paper is special parchment, isn't it? That's right. Properly aged in the right texture, no doubt. 
How did you get it to the old boy in the first place? If you must know, it was smuggled into the prison tailor shop where he works. Oh? In the bolts of cloth. You know, that's pretty neat, Miss... Uh... Fenton. Louise Fenton. Fenton? Fenton and Madden. Uh, no, no, no. Madden and Fenton. Well, that sounds kind of nice. Uh, huh, partner? <laughs> well, what's so funny? It's going to be a short partnership, Mr. Madden. This is the last letter. Oh? What's the matter? Pop's good old right hand getting shaky? No. But the sale of items like this is. The last one, huh? So, how much do I get? Half. Half? Oh, I should say about $5,000. 5000 huh? Well, not bad. Not bad at all. And now, partner, will you give me the letter so I can make arrangements for its sale? With pleasure. Oh, and uh, when and where do I pick up my dividend? I'll have it for you. Where are you staying? Well, the California Hotel, probably. I'll bring it to you there. Tomorrow. Good. And, uh, partner. Yes. <laughs> Don't get any ideas like this Aaron Burr guy had. I mean, uh, pulling a fastie, shall we say? Don't worry. Oh, 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 but I will. I'll be sticking close to you, honey, right up till we meet again when you deliver those 5,000 wonderful green clams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, till then, I'll think of nothing else. <laughs> Tonight's $20 signal gasoline book goes to Clara E. Chestnut of Berkeley, California for this limerick. A thrill-seeking driver named Pruitt was told signal gasoline would do it. So Pruitt did try it. And on this new diet, his old car took wing and he flew it. Signal, signal, signal gasoline. Your car will go far, will go farther gasoline. <laughs> Maybe your car won't actually take wing like that of the driver in the limerick when you switch to signal. But you will experience the next best thing to flying when you feel signal's swift, sure pickup. Signal's smooth, effortless power. For in gasoline, pleasure-packed performance just naturally goes hand in hand with good mileage. If you want to be sure of getting both, then the next time your gas tank gets thirsty, be sure you get signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. advice from Pop Wiley is about to pay off for you, isn't it? More than Pop planned, of course. He wanted you to go to Mrs. Alden's house for another reason, didn't he? So that his accomplice, Louise Fenton, could somehow manage to get your suit and the letter that Pop forged. The letter supposedly written over a hundred years ago by Aaron Burr, and worth quite a sum in the current collector's market. Yes, you spoiled it all for them by catching Louise in the act of ripping the lining of the discarded suit given you the day you left prison. Now they're forced to include you in their highly profitable enterprise. There's always the danger, however, that Louise will be foolish enough to try to run out on you. And you wonder about it after she leaves you. Wonder, too, about Mrs. Alden and where she fits into the plan. You decide not to take any chances. That evening, you pay a visit to Mrs. Alden and surprise Louise. You! I thought... Sorry, I... honey, I got lonesome. Wanted to talk some more. You shouldn't have come here. Why not? This is where Pop told me to come in the first place, to see Mrs. Alden. She's upstairs, asleep. I told you I'd bring you the money. I thought you just might have picked it up earlier. I... All right, I did. Here, I have it for you. Just a minute. Oh, it's okay. I'll just come in and sit down and we'll... Uh... Louise. Oh, it's Mrs. Alden. So I'll see you. No, you've got to leave. Uh, Louise. It's all right, Mrs. Alden. Where does she figure? She has nothing to do with it. Just an eccentric old lady uh, who Louise. has... Louise, I didn't ask if it was all right. I said, who is it? Oh, why, it's only... Never mind. Now that I'm down here, he can answer for himself. Well, young man. Uh, my name is Madden, Mrs. Alden. I've heard about the wonderful work you're doing. I mean, with some of these boys getting out of prison. Oh? Yes, and I, I'd sort of like to, well, help in some way. Uh. 
Uh, Mr. Madden means a small donation, Mrs. Alden. Uh, perhaps like the set of books you donated to the prison library. Oh, no, no, Miss Fetland. That isn't what I mean. No. I want to be actively engaged. Help you, perhaps. Be uh, here for several days or a week or on call or... Oh, anything, Mrs. Alden. Anything at all. Well, we can certainly use help. Can't we, Louise? Uh, yes. Yes, certainly. Yes, Ernie, your services are welcome to Mrs. Alden. Not to Louise, of course. But that isn't important. All that matters is that you're near her. She gives you your share of the money for the sale of the letter. Despite what she told you, you decide to remain on hand for any word that might indicate future possibilities in the transactions between Louise and Pop Wiley. It comes sooner than you expected. When a few days later you drop in at Louise's curio shop, hear her in a telephone conversation. That's right, Mr. Slagle. I'll have the Aaron Burr letter for you Tuesday. Tuesday evening. What's that? Oh, yes, yes, of course. You'll have the money. Yes, my price is 25000 All right, Tuesday. Tuesday. That's all you need to hear. Louise Fenton lied to you, didn't she, Ernie? There is another letter. And you know just how it will be smuggled out of prison. Yes, and that's why you're waiting outside the gates on Tuesday, bright and early, ready to intercept a certain party who's being released. Hello, Sid. Huh? Oh, Ernie Madden. What are you doing around here? Oh, I just came by to see you. Me? Yeah, yeah, I'm tied in with a new outfit now. So and... long, kid. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is legit. Yeah? Sure, sure. I'm working with the Community Aid Society. An old lady named Mrs. Alden runs it. Oh, her? Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pop made me... Promised that I'd see her, but I changed my mind. I don't want her charity. Well, all right, all right. You don't have to talk to her if you don't want her. But uh, she gave me the dough for a suit for you. Yeah? Well, what's wrong with the one I got on? Okay, so it ain't the last word. Look, I'll see you around, huh? All right, all right, if you feel that way about it. Well, come on, if you're going into town, I'll give you a lift. I got a car down the block. It's a free ride. You don't mind? A ride I can use. You get him away just in time, don't you, Ernie? Because as you round the corner, you see Louise's car pull up to the prison gate. You drive off before she can follow. Now you're alone with Sid. And you know it's not going to be easy getting him to part with his prison issue, the third suit. A suit that's worth $25,000 because of the letter hidden in the shoulder padding. You've made up your mind, haven't you, Ernie? Yes, you're going to stay close to Sid in that suit he's wearing. And you do in the hours that follow. As you drive him several places while he tries to find a girl he used to know. Late that afternoon, he wants to make another call in hopes of reaching her. You let Sid off at a drugstore and find a parking place just around the corner. You light a cigarette, sit back, and wait for Sid to return. You've got to get that suit from him. And the letter that you're certain is hidden in the shoulder pad. Yes, but how, Ernie? He gives you enough time to think it over clearly and decide what you must do. Quickly, you step around to the back of the car, the baggage compartment. Your hand closes over the heavy wrench. You flip it into your pocket. You'll just have to take Sid for a little ride in the country if you're going to get that letter, won't you, Ernie? You're just easing in behind the wheel again when Sid joins you. Uh. No, Ernie, she still don't answer. Ah, oh, that's tough. Say, how about a little ride out there? Ernie, Ernie, I've been thinking about seeing my girl and everything. That offer you made me this morning, still good? You mean about, about the new suit? Yeah. Sure. Oh, so a nice old lady wants to buy me a classy outfit. So what's wrong with it, huh? It makes her happy. What I got against making an old lady happy? <laughs> now you're talking, Sid. Yeah, so I let her buy me a suit. Sure, it's a smart thing to do. <laughs> Sid, <laughs> this is probably the smartest move you ever made. Huh? <laughs> skip it, kid, skip it. Yes, I think you'll really enjoy these suits, sir. Now, uh, let me see. I'm going to have to shorten the sleeves a little. Uh, Making a bit here. Here. And yeah, the pants, too, pal. <laughs> Of course, 
I'll have our tailor here in just a moment. Uh, by the way, will it take long? Well, uh, we've been rather busy, you know. Oh, I'd, uh, I'd say we could have it ready uh, sometime tomorrow afternoon. Uh, look, pal, maybe you and the tailor could get together. Here, split this 20 between you and get the suit out for my friend while he waits, huh? <clears throat> well, I, I think perhaps we can arrange that. The alterations are minor, really. Fine, fine. Here you are, and this will take care of the suit. Thank you. Hey, uh, you leaving, Ernie? Uh, yes, yes, I have a very important date, Sid. Here's a magazine you can read while you're in the dressing room waiting for the alterations. And look, Sid, I'll just take this blue serge of yours with me. Mrs. Alden, you know, she can give it to somebody who could really use it, see? I'll uh, see you around, pal. <laughs> Back at your hotel room, you rip open the suit coat. And there it is, Ernie. Neatly concealed in the shoulder padding, the letter from Aaron Burr. The letter that you're sure is a forgery from the skilled pen of Pop Wiley. And it will bring you $25,000. It takes you a little time to find the man you're looking for, Mr. Slagle, the man Louise spoke to. But finally, you find his phone number, call his office, and then... Hello? Uh, hello, is uh, Mr. Slagle in... Louise. Yes, Ernie. I've been expecting you to call. When I didn't hear from you, I knew you'd call here. So I've already talked with Mr. Slagle. What's the idea? I told him, darling partner, that you'd be delivering the letter. You can meet us at my curio shop. You know the address. <sighs> okay. What time? Eight o'clock will be fine. And don't be late, Ernie. Mr. Slagle is a very interested buyer. Well, Ernie, Louise has outguessed you, hasn't she? But it's still a windfall, and you'll still share in Mr. Slagle's payment. Shortly before eight, you drive across town and enter Louise Fenton's curio shop. Oh, come in, Ernie, come in. Hello, Louise. I want you to meet Mr. Slagle. Mr. Slagle, Mr. Davis, my associate. How do you do, Mr. Davis? Mr. Slagle? Uh, you have the letter, Ernie. Oh, yes, yes. Here you are, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes, this is it. And now, Miss Fenton, this envelope is for you. If you care to um, count the money... Uh, no, that won't be necessary, Mr. Slagle. Thank you. Ah, after all these years, the letter is mine. You don't know what this letter means to me, Miss Fenton, Mr. Davis. And you don't know what this envelope means to me. To both of us, darling. Oh, of course, Ernie. To both of us. <laughs> When you buy an automobile battery, you want three things. You want power for quick starts. You want trouble-free long life. And you want economy. You get all three of these things and more of them in the new Signal Deluxe battery. Power? You get up to 35% more power. Because the microporous all-rubber separators in new Signal Deluxe batteries hold twice as much acid solution between the plates. Long life? Signal's written guarantee for a full 30 months on a service basis assures you extra-long, trouble-free performance. Economy? Those extra months and months of service in a Signal Deluxe battery mean amazingly low cost per month, which is the only logical way to compare battery costs. What's more, you can now get a generous trade-in allowance for your old battery at Signal service stations, plus liberal credit terms. So before you buy any battery, see your Signal dealer. Let facts and figures prove that you get today's best battery buy where you fill up with the famous Go Farther gasoline at a signal service station. It's over, Ernie. You've sold the Aaron Burr letter to Mr. Slagle. And he's given you and Louise the $25,000. It's fantastic, isn't it? How you unknowingly brought the first letter out of prison in the suit they gave you on the day of your parole. How you discovered the clever plot between Louise Fenton and old Pop Wiley, the imprisoned forger. But Louise caught on to you when you intercepted the second letter, unwittingly smuggled out by Sid Nolan. Yet it really doesn't matter now. Because the money Mr. Slagle just paid for it is enough for both of you. 
You smile as Mr. Slagle leaves the shop. But as he does, someone else enters. Hello, madam. Huh? Oh, hello, Solari. Well, what do you want? A word. In private, if you'd rather. No, 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 it's okay. Miss Fenton, Lieutenant Solari, police How department. How do you do? How do you do, miss? Well, all right. What brings you around here, Lieutenant? Sid Nolan, the two of you got pretty chummy today. Spent an awful lot of time together. You ought to know we don't like a couple of parolees palling around. Well, okay, but I was just doing them a favor. All right, that's fine. I just thought I'd come around and warn you. Better break it up. Sure, sure. Don't worry. Anything else? No, nothing else. Oh, uh, Miss Fenton, Mr. Davis. Slagle. Uh, pardon me for interrupting. I just wanted to say if you ever run across any more Aaron Burr originals... Yes, yes, of course. I'll pay a good price. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Uh... Slagle, Augustus Slagle. Uh, you, uh, you are a collector, too? Oh, uh, of sorts. Uh, then you'll be interested in this letter I just purchased from Miss Fenton, Mr. Davis. A letter by Aaron Burr. Here, look. Mm-hmm. Sure this is the real thing? Real? Why, of course. I know. I know it is. Why do you ask? I was just wondering. Your Mr. Davis here isn't really Mr. Davis at all. His name's Ernie Madden. Got out of state prison just a week ago. What? Yeah. And he's a good friend of Pop Wiley's. Maybe you heard of Pop. An expert forger. Very good at things like uh, this. You mean this letter? You think it's... I think we'd better take this downtown and have it checked. How about it, Ernie? Okay. Okay, so Larry, why bother? It's a phony, sure, just like all the others. Ernie! Look, sweetheart, look. When you're caught cold, it's, it's no use, I know. Yeah. You know, don't you, Ernie? Okay, let's go, the both of you. Ernie, you stupid fool. Now there'll be an investigation. They'll find out about the other letters I've sold, the forgery. They've got us dead to rights when they check this letter. They'll find it's not a forgery. Pop Wiley had to have something to work from, so I bought the original Aaron Burr letter and sent it to him. And that was it. The one we just sold to Mr. Slagle. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine automotive accessories. Remember, if you would like the fun of having your friends hear a limerick of yours on The Whistler, the address to which to send it is the Signal Oil Company, Los Angeles 55, California. All limericks become the property of the Signal Oil Company. Those selected for use on the Whistler will be chosen by our advertising representatives on the basis of humor, suitability, and originality. So, of course, they must be your own composition. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Wally Mayer and Doris Singleton. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Joel Malone, music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember, at this same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. S-I-T-N-A-L Signal Signal Gasoline Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.